was recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, I appreciate the pleas to go home, but we're here to do business, and this gentleman does not speak on the floor every day on every issue, and there are a few issues I might say to my distinguished friend from Massachusetts that are compelling enough that one must speak. Just introducing a few written remarks by the staff is not adequate. Or making a few comments with respect to one of my colleagues' amendments earlier is not adequate. There comes a moment when one has to speak to tell his or her own story vis-a-vis -vis the proposition that is before the body. One of my distinguished colleagues on the other side of the aisle stated that he was born in 1942, has no recollection of the war. This gentleman was born in 1935, so I do recall the war and felt the war through the body of a child and saw it through the eyes of a child. My home was in the middle of the block on Wood Street in West Oakland. On the corner was a small grocery store owned by Japanese people. My best friend was Rollin, a young Japanese child, same age. I will never forget, Mr. Chairman and members of this body, never forget, because the moment is burned indelibly upon this child's memory, six years of age. The day the six by trucks came to pick up my friend. I would never forget the vision of fear in the eyes of Rollin, my friend, and the pain of leaving home. My mother, as bright as she was, try as she may, could not explain to me why my friend was being taken away as he screamed not to go. And this six-year-old black American child screamed back, don't take my friend. No one could help me understand that. No one, Mr. Chairman. So it wasn't just Japanese Americans who felt the emotion, because they lived in the total context of community. And I was one of the people who lived in community. And so I would say to my colleagues, this is not just compensation for being interned. How do you compensate Rollin, six years of age, who felt the fear that he was leaving his home, his community, his friend, Ron, the black American who later became a member of Congress, Rollin, the Japanese American who later became a doctor, a great healer. This meager $20,000 is also compensation for the pain and the agony that he felt and that his family felt. This meager $20,000 in 1942 terms, $2,800, is also compensation for the thousands of dollars of personal belongings that were strewn on the streets on 10th and Wood Street in West Oakland in 1942. Because in case you don't know it, they could only take what they could carry. And so the little football that we played in the streets on, in the streets, the games that we played that took up hours of our time in the streets, the furniture that we romped on and raffled upon as children in 1942 in the streets. So this $20,000 and this formula that if you were in for one day you get a few nickels, if you were in for three years you get the whole $20,000, as if we could play that game. This is not about how long you were in prison. It is about how much pain was inflicted upon thousands of American people who happened to be yellow in terms of skin color, Japanese in terms of ancestry. But this black American cries out as loudly as my Asian American brothers and sisters 
on this issue. So this formula, while well-intended, does not in any way address the reality of the misery, Mr. Chairman. It must be rejected out of hand because it doesn't address the misery. Vote for this bill without this amendment and let Rollin feel that you understood the pain in his eyes and the sorrow in his heart as he rode away screaming, not knowing when and if he would ever return. I yield back the balance of my time. And the gentleman has it. Distinguished guests, my fellow Americans, we gather here today to right a grave wrong. More than 40 years ago, shortly after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, 120,000 persons of Japanese ancestry living in the United States were forcibly removed from their homes and placed in makeshift internment camps. This action was taken without trial, without jury. It was based solely on race. For throughout the war, Japanese Americans in the tens of thousands remained utterly loyal to the United States. August 10, 1988, 46 years after being imprisoned in concentration camps, Americans of Japanese ancestry finally received an official apology from the United States government.